As I discussed in a previous video, CES 2017 is finally underway, and while we've not had anything awesomely exciting just yet, we do have some interesting information on the Qualcomm 10nm Snapdragon 835 at CES. Now, if you've been paying attention to the various leaks and so on over this last little while, you might have seen pretty much almost the entire processor's specs, thanks to some various slides, but we have had Qualcomm confirm and also add some more details. So, this particular processor is an octa-core design and features their upgraded Cairo cores, which they are dubbing Cairo 280. Now, as expected, these have been sorted into big and little. The high-performance bit cluster will be reaching frequencies of 2.45 GHz, as for the little, it will be able to clock at 1.9. And they are also promising a rather hefty 27% increase in performance numbers. In terms of power efficiency, they're claiming that the 835 will be 40% more efficient when compared to 820 from last year. Now, of course, this all brings into a question of, well, what's the impact on the battery life? Well, apparently the 835 is going to bring more efficiency to that, able to offer more than one day of talk time, more than five days of music playback, and more than seven days of 4K streaming. Their Quick Charge 4.0 has also made it onto the processor. Now, I do have a bit of a quote from Evan Blass from the one and only VentureBeat about the topic of battery life. And he says, quote, We've custom built a more efficient SoC for today's power user who regularly stream music, uploads videos, takes conference calls and plays VR games. There isn't one type of processor for all applications, so Snapdragon 835 calls on the Qualcomm Cairo 280 CPU, Qualcomm Adreno 540 GPU and Qualcomm Hexagon DSP to manage separate workloads. All of them tightly integrated by Qualcomm Symphony System Manager to support better thermals and longer battery life. Along with the new 10NM design, these multi-pronged harmonised computing solutions bring unprecedented energy improvements. These include plus 1 plus day day of talk time, 5 plus days of music playback and 7 plus hours of 4K video and so on and so on. Now, Evan also claims that the Snapdragon 835 is going to deliver what they call five key improvements. And this reads, quote, ultra-fast charging and multi-day battery life, jaw-dropping virtual and live immersion, the most advanced camera capabilities, gigabit LTE connectivity, and inside-out security. Now, as I just mentioned in Evan's quote there, the Adreno GPU series is back with the 835 and, as you might guess, is powered by an Adreno 540 GPU. It is able to support 4K at 60fps and will increase graphics rendering by a fairly impressive 25%. Now, another thing that Evan mentioned in his tweet longer there was the Hexagon 690 DSP, which in turn will support TensorFlow. TensorFlow is going to allow for some interesting features such as machine learning, gesture tracking and more, which will hopefully in turn allow for virtual assistance, biometrics and a whole lot more. As well as all this, the 835 is offering 25% faster 3D graphics rendering and 60 times more display colours when compared again to the 820. So with all that said, as usual, the latest iteration of Snapdragon is sounding rather impressive indeed, bringing some nice improvements to the table. Now, while none of it is going to exactly set the world on fire, it is still an interesting upgrade nonetheless, and it is interesting to see the improvements in battery life, as of course, that's probably one of the most common complaints when it comes to smartphones is the battery life compared to the phones that that I grew up with, like the good old 3310, are not really that brilliant. But of course, you know, I'm not going to be seriously comparing those two phones, but you get my point, battery life is a common complaint to see that being addressed while still being able to do the newer demands of the user, such as VR, 4K and so on, while still mostly keeping up is still not bad. Now, as always, I will be linking the source in the description below this video. That tweet longer from Evan Blast is linked there below. There is quite a bit there that I haven't gone through, such as AR and VR capture connectivity, you know, LTE components and all that. So there is quite a bit there for your perusal if you're interested in more information on the Snapdragon 820. It very much could be powering and probably will be powering the next line of top-of-the-line phones. And it's going to be interesting to see exactly what improvements we can see in real life practice. But still, 
our first real information, well not our first, but one of our first real pieces of information from CES. Let's hope it continues as we've got quite a while of CES to go. Of course we've got the big conferences yet to come, but until then, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.